Welcome to another episode of At The Bar Podcast here at World of Beer UCF. As always, I'm your host, Mike. With me to my right, the one and only Mr. Jeff. Hello. To his, across the table, and to my left, returning, his triumphant return, Mr. David. Hi, How are you? I am back. He's back. He's back. Yeah. And we have a special guest, David. It's my older brother. Is it? Yes. And really? we found out we found out the other day that he's actually pregnant with three puppies. It's so. been about ten years strong now. <laughs> I'm still these he's boys. still in the gestation period, but is it your brother? Gonna, yes. Yeah, okay. I'm the well, okay. brother in, in the terms of like my dad and his mom did it and then he came out of my mom's Oh, okay. Can you slow down that? <laughs> mom. So, so here's here's the thing. Place? I just want to I guess want to let you guys know a little this bit about This is Ken by the way. Get, yeah. We're going to get yeah. edited on I want to let you know no, about no, Ken. No. I want to give you some backstory about Ken. Um, he actually is the king of beer. Um, oh. and he's uh, he's a huge supporter of Budweiser. And you know, I'll tell you what, my Bud Light's my utility beer. Yeah, I think Bud, I think Budweiser, I Bud Miller. Is this, about about is this what we're talking about this? Chugging. Is this what we're talking about this episode? No, we're not. Bud Light. No, because no, no, I will not. leave right now. Uh, no, no. no. Seriously, in all seriousness, this guy's gay, and um, <laughs> <laughs> and I love him. So, so that makes me gay too. Love you too. <laughs> oh my gosh! I'm so glad David's back. We already oh started God. off with a my gig. wife is going to be sick. already like, right started off with a bang. So I want to I want to bring you guys the future real quick, and then bring you back bring you back. We've done this once. Before we're, we're, it was okay. pretty epic. So here we go. Tarantino, here we're we go. Flip forward, right? So I'm sitting on my couch, and I'm I'm on my iPhone number six plus, by the way, which only measures five and a half inches. Doesn't make any sense. And I'm <laughs> <laughs> I'm on. I, I have my like my speaker set up. You know how the iPhone speaker like sucks, and I've got it on like as loud as I can get it. And I'm listening to YouTube. I'm listening to Mike's podcast. I'm listening to this right now. Right now, I'm listening to this, and my this wife's looking at me. This is future you listening to us now talking about how most guys think five and a half inches is six inches. <laughs> yes, got it. very close to that. So then my wife up. right now is sitting on the other, the tiny little love seat, and she's looking over at me, and my son's probably running around the table doing something stupid like that little shit does. And then what she's doing <laughs> is she's looking at me right now going, why don't you just shut up? Just like, I, I, you do a good job when you let the guys talk, but why don't you just shut up? So I just, and now we come back and we're back and we're back guys. And we're back. We're back to now. At least you didn't make the elephant in the room joke again. (laughs) I I really, I I, saved that. That was an awesome I I really did not want to have a kid because I was worried about raising a disappointment, but it's working out pretty good. You're you're getting so much into the blooper episode right now. You just might've trumped me. Don't even edit it. Nobody, nobody has more than me, but you might have, do you have little babies, Ken? I do. Uh, You're good. Yeah. This is a great episode. I'm already, I'm already digging this. Two daughters, so yeah, got a shotgun awesome. already. Also, okay, cool. Prepared. So uh, we are drinking Julius. Julius, right? What else David? are you drinking? I'm. Me and Jeff are drinking <gasps> Highlight. White, white oak Highlight. White oak uh, Highlight. Like white oak. <laughs> it's a tan. <laughs> white. Yep. We're 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 starting early here with a cigar city Highlight White Oak. I like it. It's pretty good. It's a little flat, but I can deal with it. I can live with it. So we have a very cool episode today. This is, I believe this is episode number nine. So we're just going to get Teen. into it. Teen. Nine. Oh, Nineteen. Teen. We're going to get into it. <laughs> like the girls I'm looking for. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's not on a treadmill anymore. Oh, man. Oh. So we're, we're going to start off here. Uh, this came from a listener who suggested this topic, and I liked it. And we all liked it. S- craft beer styles you're currently into, and what style got you into craft beer? Can we so. reverse that question? Sure. Do you think that would be you better do, or no? You I'm asking. You, I'm asking. Uh, we could do that. I, I asked a question. Yeah, we can do, I didn't yeah, make a statement. We can do that. We could do what styles got you into craft beer. All right. Jeff. Is Jeff. burping on the mic a lot? Sorry. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, we can, you say okay. fuck, fuck, burp. We, no, just burping. Vienna, just burping? Here it oh, goes. Yeah. Ready? Ready? I'm going to make a so quick guess. Vienna lager. Is what? <laughs> is what got you into craft beer. sausage. Guys, just because it's a sausage fest doesn't mean I like sausage, right? Sign me up. Well... As I have said in, in previous episodes, my first craft beer was a Bell's Oberon, which would mean that my first beer that got me into craft beer would be a wheat beer. Wheat beer. Why are you putting so much emphasis on the H? <laughs> what? Why I don't you know what you're talking so about. so much emphasis on the H? Jeff, you look flustered. Um, <laughs> so a wheat beer would be the first beer that got me into craft beer, which uh, explains partially probably why I'm a, a malt-forward person. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like most people who get into craft beer and start with an IPA stick with IPAs forever. Uh which are we gonna are we are we doing overrated and underrated styles this episode or what? No, I think we're no? gonna save it. Save yeah. that. All right. Yeah. Future. I won't episode. talk about that then. Um, 
Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert for yeah, whenever that whatever. comes out. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, wheat beers would be the first one. Citrus wheat beers. I'm from Florida, so citrus has always been a big thing in my diet and growing up. And I, I it was kind of – Oberon played really well into what my palate was. I Is liked that orange. You maintain that beautiful figure of yours. Yeah, man, just orange juice all the time. It has more calories than beer. It's you got insane. a haircut, Jeff. I did. It, I shaved my head the other day. And you got more silver. You're silver fossing it this episode. You know, I went to my <laughs> draft last year for fantasy baseball, and a lot of the guys, twelve dudes, none of them had seen me in a Another year. Sausage fest. None of them had seen me in a year. We always right. do it. We rent a house in Georgia. We go shoot guns and play golf all weekend. Um, it's pretty manly. But so, so we go up there and no one's seen me in a year and I'm sitting at the draft and my buddy who's I've known since I was six years old, right? he's sitting next to me and he just goes, holy shit, man, are you going to name your team Silver Foxes? And I'm like, damn it, man. Really? Is it that bad? Have I been that stressed out this year that I have a fucking gray hair? Apparently. Yeah. yeah. I got a lot of gray though. Well, the that's clean right. look is starting to look, work out for you. So yeah. You got the salt and pepper look. That's in, man. The last time I shaved it completely skinhead was... Was pretty epic, so I might go back to that, or I'll go back to the Viking look. Who knows? Yeah, David. What? Uh, okay, we go. We go to Ken. What got you in the? What style got you in the craft beer? Belgian doubles and triples. Ooh, really? Belgian, Belgian yeah, guy. I was I was more into those uh, weedier beers. You know, love that yeast and all the characteristics they added. Uh, banana clove and mm-hmm. such. Um, really, nothing really interesting. My buddy was like, "Here, have some Lafin de Mon and. From there, it was just a catalyst into anything Belgium. What What were you drinking before then? <laughs> Bud Light. Bud Light. Bud Light. Budweiser. So you went Crushing from you went it. from Bud Light to La Fin du Monde. He was well, drinking I mean, American okay. ale. When, but let's be when real. Budweiser made American ale. He was drinking that too. But La Fin, La Fin is a good bridge I mean, beer not, yeah. from that. It's because right, you right. can almost yeah. anybody who, no matter if you drink beer at all, you can kind of bridge into La Fin because it's approachable for it's La, a triple, right? La Fin du Monde. Yeah. yeah. La Fin I mean, du Monde. I believe it is a triple. Triple or golden? That's, I don't a, that's know. a good. I think it's a that's a good tasting triple, though. I mean, it normally some like it's like solid. you know, oh, Jeff really went to, you went to wheat. Some people go into you know maybe like lighter porters, like vanilla porter. I think a lot of people start with, very with few people Kolsch, that, uh, Pilsner, right, right. you know that stuff. Yeah, very few people really go from like one end to the other. Well, that's why I was you know, surprised, which is interesting. And if you think about like what you start with as mainstream with Bud Light, Budweiser, all those mainstream beers, all of that is kind of. I mean, not that there's anything that's on display, but it's all malt forward beers. There's not a lot of hop presence, not a lot of yeast presence. It's not a lot of malt presence really either, but there's nothing to hide behind. It's all malt. Right. And uh, it's water. Right. Yeah. I mean. So it's surprising when somebody goes from that to yeast forward styles as their first bridge. So that's uh, when you said Belgian, I was like, oh, that's weird. Yeast, yeah. yeast. Yeah. All right. So what kind no. of beers is he into, right? So, you know, like what I mean, is he Do you still drink the La Fin du Mans or sure, have you sure. kind of staple. grown from that? Uh, of course, I've grown like any of us would have. Um, right. I actually, you know, a little backstory though is I actually matured with the uh, market. Uh, Florida, as we all know, is eons, you know, behind everybody else. And so, as everybody was moving into it, that's how I kind of moved in. And right. you know, nowadays, sure, I'll drink it a little thin, but I'm mostly into uh, porters and sours now. Really? Okay. So, yeah, I have really no favorite. I'll drink mm-hmm. anything as long as it's good. That's how I okay. am, except for Berliners. Although the lychee Berliner was oh, real the good. Vomit, the vomit just comes in and it just doesn't go away. It's funny that you said that about <laughs> Florida, though, because it is way behind everybody, but it's also like the, the second fastest growing state yeah, in the country for craft years, beer. So in terms of data, it's insane. So yeah. we're we're booming. We're just way behind. So we're we're playing catch up. Like everything else in Florida, we're behind. Yeah, or we messed something up. Concurs. What about you, David? All right, what, what's okay. your thing, boss? Okay, so we're going to go with uh, what beer got me, what style of beer got me into craft yeah. beer. Yeah. Um, sea Dog Blue Paw. Sea Dog's Blue Paw, <laughs> <Do it. laughs> uh, which is a wheat ale. He, he did or mention it in fruit, the past. It's like a fruit beer. It's like almost like a fruit wheat ale. It's, like, yeah, it's, it's fruit it's slash fruit wheat. It's like, yeah. it's like that. There's like a kind of a Yeah, the dudes who drink there. it are pretty fruity. Yeah, pretty artificial. <laughs> Fucking, why do you think it's me then? Um, so that, that's actually what got me into it. And I, I think we talked about it one of the other episodes. It was just literally smelling something that had this strong, overpowering blueberry smell to it, which is something I, I love. And then as soon as I took a sip of it, it had that crisp, um, carbonated, um, slightly, you know, metallic bite that like like a Budweiser would. Right. You know, so you kind of like, it was like pairing these this like, one like great. A carbonic bite almost. You know, so this one, <laughs> this one um, style of, of, fruit that I, I mean, I mean, yeah. I, 
you know, that's that's me since I was a kid. And then yeah. all of a sudden you mix it with a beer that I'm kind of already drinking. Sign me up. It makes sense. And then uh, the beers that I'm into now, the style well, of He's getting ahead of us already. Yeah, I didn't, oh, oh, I didn't do that. Uh, I didn't do that. I definitely jumped that. ahead. No, it's okay. I was like, Sweet oh, and sour plant. sauce yeah, all over. All over. Bitches. Sweet from, and sour me, sauce. I think we've all mentioned it. Mine was Florida Avenue Blueberry Wit. Oh, I'm sorry. All you guys with your blueberry beers. Yeah. Well, hmm. no. whatever. Florida, Ave, really? Florida Avenue, yeah. Who XAD. recently just closed their doors, I believe, right? right? Yeah, they're now defunct. Equipment. Yeah. Yeah, I was in a, a month after touring 21. I went to the one of the beer fests downtown. I did used to like that. And I had, a, I had an Narragansett, the first tent that was there. I'm like, all oh, right, this tastes like a Bud Light. So the next table was a Florida Avenue. So I was like, what the hell is this blueberry stuff? I'm like, it's only, it was only like little two-ounce two, two ounce samples. I was like, fuck it. You know, I, I, already. I already paid for the admission. I'm going to drink everything. So I drank By it. And I was like, I was like, what is this? Like a blueberry wit? He's like, oh, yeah, it's like Blue Moon but with blueberries. And I was like, oh. It blew my mind. And then I had the regular Florida Avenue, and I was like, oh, my God, what is all this stuff? And that, like, threw me into, like, what have I not had? So and you then went I a just, really safe route, if you will. I went super safe. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I went from, you know, just being 21, now I can drink, pay 30 bucks, I can drink all these beers for four hours, I'm going to fucking drink everything. Yeah. Nice. Narragansett, I'm like, all right, tastes just like a Bud Light. And then I had the Florida Avenue, I'm like, what the hell? And I think, like, Magic How was after. I had the, the number nine, I was like, <gasps> Number nine. What? There's there's stuff hey, other than on. Blue there Moon. Used to be a special place in everybody's heart for Magic. I love Hat. Magic Hat. Don't get me wrong. And then I was like, there's, I there's love what they do to our sales too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was me, not Jeff. I was thinking out loud. Oh yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it, I didn't say it. <laughs> it, it we don't even, I don't oh, even man. think we have them right now. I don't think so. Yeah, we don't they, carry Magic they, Hat right they now. They still have a mural or did, no? No, Sweetwater, Sweetwater still has a mural. <laughs> <laughs> so they're they're AB's next acquisition, I think. Oh. I, I went they super safe. They might buy AB at the rate right they're growing. <laughs> they're only in 17 states. We're, they're we're going gonna, anywhere. We're going to open up a brewery in California, you dumb shits. Um, Everybody wants to go so west, go ahead, right? Your thought. Yeah, oh yeah. So I went super safe. I went, <laughs> I went balls to the wall and kind of like, you. you know, it, it made me realize something. There's, you know, stuff other than Blue Moon. And I re- at the time, I really liked Blue Moon. So Another I was like, oh beer. man, you know. But flavorful. But this is before, you know, craft beer. You know, Blue right. Moon was like, oh, if I want cheap but, Keystone. But that's not craft beer. That didn't get you into craft beer. You can't use it as a craft beer. I, it's, artfully, it's, it's artfully crafted. That's, it's, it's, artful. it's, it's, but, it's a Belgian style, not brewed. But when Belgian. I had the, the Florida Avenue check? blueberry. What? Did you get your check? Did you did you file a lawsuit about being confused and thinking the beer was brewed? I'm getting my Red Bull $10 pretty soon. <laughs> But it, it made me like See, it, it tasted like a episode. blueberry blue moon. So I was like, "Oh wow, what's all this? Oh, we're brewed in Tampa." And like that kind of like propelled me to like try other things that I never had before. Instead of you know a Keystone, when I felt fancy, I had a blue moon. Well, I'm like, "Oh, what's this Florida Avenue stuff? What's this Magic Hat stuff? What's yeah. all these different you know Cigar City? What the hell's that?" And then kind of just you had a good revol- a good introduction. Catapulted. Yeah, you, I mean, you, you kind of came in really safe, but you had a lot of flavors with those beers. Yeah, yeah. and, and I drank hard that day. Oh, yeah, of course you did. I had everything. Forty dollars, you got to yeah. drink hard. You, you drink know, I drank. You know, I kind of did the same thing, and it was prior to me working for World of Beer, so I wasn't even into craft beer. And now following this, yeah. following this thing, but I did I did a, a beer festival down in Jupiter actually at the Hammerhead Stadium, the spring training facility mm-hmm. for the Marlins and the Cardinals, mm-hmm. um, and uh, or she comes back. She'll get one. Um, but when I came uh, when I came out of it, I, I went in and I tried some really just ridiculous stuff, and it is where I found out that I liked dark beers. So although like For what? Oberon was my first like craft beer that I that I note as like the reason I got into craft beer, but I had already gone to a beer festival with a bunch of like South Florida craft breweries represented, which this was four years ago, and you know what the craft beer market Funky was in but Florida. It wasn't open. No, right. nobody was open. Back then, it was nobody's all over the place. It was, it was Cuban place. beer being imported up and here. And <laughs> I tried some stuff that, like, dude, this is when, this is when like, a coconut porter tasted like suntan lotion, not, like, heaven. Oh so, like, God. you know. Oh, my God. Do you get that, too? Yeah. yeah I get that. Dude, there's some still today. Some some that do where you're like, that's, yeah. that TCB might be, yeah. Still fails to evolve. Yeah. Sign me up for some suntan lotion in my beer. I love it. It and reminds me of the beach. It, a little SPF bit sometimes. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but yeah, so I, I went there and I kind of did the same thing. And so after Oberon and after going through beer school, I was like, well, obviously I know I like malts. What is the you most malty thing I can do? In beer school, were you spanked? Or no. No, no I, I, I mean, 
Beer school is the hardest thing I ever fucking did. It's so hard, but we. Yeah. But I passed. I, I made thought it. it been, I thought it would have been being with another um, guy, but anyway, no. That's you. That's oh, you. That's, <laughs> that's you again. But I went. Allowed. I went. <laughs> what is the most malty beer? Because obviously I like malts. So what is the most malty beer? And let me see if I like that right. more. That was just my stupid logic going through it, and it actually worked out because next thing I'm trying after that of any note was uh, was actually Weyerbacher. Heresy, holy shit! Barrel aged vanilla imperial God. stout, yep. beautiful, fantastic beer. I was like, I love imperial stouts now. So I went from weeds to imperial stouts, that's, and, and then stayed. That there. doesn't make any sense. But <laughs> and that's then stayed awesome. there. Yeah. That's awesome in its own right. <laughs> so what styles are you guys currently into now, oh, dude? Man, good job. I have a feeling all Jeff, our answers Jeff, are gonna be you're, you're kind on, of the you're same. On, you're on the cusp, of, uh, the lip of your seat. Come on, man. Look, no, what no, we no. I'll have somebody else talk. No, I like come to on. talk. I'll go. Jeff. Okay, Mike. I'm really digging porters. I've been uh, the last year or so. I've been really into porters, and and stouts. Is and that I, Funky I, Buddha doing that to you? Because I mean, they're, they're pulling off some great Funky shit. Funky Buddha is not helping. Uh, they're really? a French toast double no, brown. He, he, I, I he's like saying it the other way. The other way, like he agrees with you. Yeah. I agree with you. Like Funky uh, Buddha is like the Neapolitan, the French toast, which technically isn't nib a smuggler. porter, but it's close enough. Nib smuggler, nib delicious. smuggler, yeah. I, I had I, their it, nib slip. Normally, I'm nib a seasonal slip drinker. For real, Ooh, so good. I'm a seasonal drinker. So like every every four months, I'll switch up a style, but. Lately, I've been into porters and stouts. So, what have you been? Uh, Jeff, you can go. You want to go? Uh, you, sure. You want me to? What I'm drinking? So, what I'm drinking nowadays? What I'm, so, I, I don't like to discriminate against styles. I'm trying to drink sours, but that's not what I am currently into. It's just what I'm trying what are to you get into. into. Jeff? Uh, I still always and will Dudes. always be <laughs> Russian Imperial <laughs> Stouts, Baltic <laughs> porters. Imperial stouts of any kind, barrel yeah. aged anything. Um, I was recently talking about. DC would lose his shit if you if you heard that. I'm recent. I was recently aged. talking about how I really wish more breweries would do imperial reds or red IPAs again, because that's a cool multi, like bitey twist on an IPA that doesn't come out tasting like a hamper. And I love imperial reds. And we were talking about Mission Karak, that was an Rex. awesome imperial red. Rex. And uh, no one's making them how anymore. About, how about a bourbon barrel aged Imperial Red? Sounds like a no, really, no. really great beer. It's yeah, <laughs> dude. Rex from Clown Shoes. Oh okay. my god. Oh my god. Yeah, like what? That but they don't. Happened. But they don't make a lot of these anymore. Uh, yeah, but there's a few. That's people. the problem. I wish they were still You're, making yeah. them. Red Cypress uh, is making Terrapin, a red IPA. Terrapin makes a, a red a red um IPA. Still, <laughs> yeah. Mosaic. I think Mosaic is a red. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, and they're good. And it's phenomenal. I will say that's one of the few beers of their core lineup that I actually like, or yeah. well, seasonal core. Right, no, right, that's, right. it's a great beer. Um, I, I don't know. I, I, I and Like I said, I'm trying to get into sours. I want to be well-rounded in the aspect that I appreciate and can enjoy any style of beer, mm-hmm. yeah. which, as we all have known for the whole time that we've been doing this, I hate Berliner Weisses, which I I'm went I went head-on with it. At, and he at Funky the Buddha, he and the, like lychee the lychee Berliner Weiss was maybe one of the but best I, beers there. It was yeah. so how much good. Lychee. I mean, it was even in the cup. It was glass. sweet. Yeah, it, it was, was very sweet. sweet. But there was a, there was a couple Berliners. The only thing is, I'm not a huge raspberry person, and I feel like Berliners are pairing with raspberries only right now. And I wish that they would good do tart. anything else. Yeah. Good tart, too. Yeah. yeah. But, Controllable uh, tart, also. Yeah. Raspberries are nice because they're pretty consistent in flavor. Mm-hmm. Again, you want to... Yeah, I mean, I kind David's of touched point on earlier. I mean, sour, stouts, porters... Kind yeah. of a whore for beer. Yeah. Simply put, um, your son. He, David has to go. Yeah, yeah, we gotta get going. Yeah, but just good. Yeah, I mean, porters, stouts, sour, sours. Okay, and then I'm spectrum. into. <laughs> and now this is David. <laughs> um, what are you into, David? My my style right now and is totally weird. But David, I like it's six o'clock. We gotta hurry this up. Black <laughs> IPAs. Really? Yes. You go to yes. Orchid Island Brewery. Good oh, choice. My God. I, I am the I am problem, totally though, digging it. Let, let me cut you off. The problem is, hit or miss. <laughs> Go ahead. It's a hit or miss category. The, it's either great or terrible. Here's the right. thing with them: is there's no consistency in what a black it, IPA can be. It, it can be extremely I, earthy or extremely hoppy I, or anywhere in between, and you're kind of just like I don't know. But I, some of them are really great, and some of them are real. Eh. I like the principle of being able to take a black IPA, and so you know you think hoppiness should be in there. And then you get a little bit of that cracked malt and then that color and that depth and a little bit of molasses from it. And then all right. of a sudden, you get hit with that long, lingering, bitter bite. And then you age it. 
for three months and you drink it and it's just like nice and thick and smooth and it, I mean that's what I like about it is the beer has so many different you know right you can you can sit them for six to six months to a year and they actually change and it's it's good yeah. just to I feel like oh. the good ones really almost taste it sounds like it doesn't this isn't gonna sound good but I feel like the good ones almost taste like dirty like earthy just real I have one in here and if it wasn't because we're I was putting it as a prize for a bottle shirt I'll bring another one so you can try it from Cigar City actually that uh-huh. was their um, Three Floyds collaboration the black oh, IPA solid. Florida oh, yeah, Man yeah, Loses yeah. a Bet yeah. solid solid I mean just and it's phenomenal and it's aging like phenomenally you're actually getting that burnt molasses you know a little bit of toffee out of it it's yeah. phenomenal caramel cool. the, uh, what's the one from Uinta that they do Doobie do, yeah, do that's they? the Imperial do, Black IPA. It's really puts, good. Right. See, I'm on the different side of that. It puts me off quite. We're gonna have to, we're gonna have to take a break off. soon. Yeah. Everybody, go home. You're drunk. We're gonna take a break. David has his obligations. Uh, this damn bottle share in my life. It's killing me. All right, we'll be back. I love you. Coasters Pub and Grill in Melbourne is having a kick-ass Belgian event. Jeff, ready? That excited. They're, they're the oldest bar in Central Florida. And, and from what I hear, the, the birds have said that's the biggest Belgian event in in the region, but maybe also in the state. It wouldn't. I wouldn't. That would not surprise me even a little so bit. What, so what's going to happen is March fourth, fifth, and sixth at Coasters Pub and Grill in Melbourne, they're having a Belgian tap takeover. They're having Belgian chocolate and Belgian cheeses for everyone Ooh. who wants to buy them and try them can have them. Tickets are free, and we will definitely be there. Yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. That sounds like an awesome event. Oh, absolutely. And I heard, I mean, rare, rare, rare Belgian, absolutely. all limited release. And I know not those, all, but mostly like, limited most release. Them, and Bel- yeah. Some Belgians are really hard to get. Oh, yeah. Uh, you no, know, some Bel- to get almost rare Bel- all Belgians are To get hard rare to get. Belgians is, uh, is a, quite the feat. So definitely come out. Me and Jeff will be there saying hi and everybody and mingling and getting drunk with you guys. Yeah, well, it'll be easy to do at a Belgian event. So, yeah. So come by Coasters Pub and Grill in Melbourne, March 4th, 5th, and 6th. We, we will be there that Saturday. So I believe that is the 5th. Yeah. Yeah, it's the 5th. I think it's so. The 5th. Yeah. So be there. Look for us. We'll be with Dave, the owner. Come say hi, and we'll, uh, we'll have a good time. Uh, let's, do the, uh, let's do the coffee one first. Uh, the one me and Jeff are about to open is from Flying Fish. For those who follow the show, we did their wild rice double IPA a couple. A yeah, couple episodes I was going to say the the the, bo- or the bottle art, I guess, or is just the label. It's the not really art, but right. the, it's the similar to bottle art right. with a street sign. It looks pretty cool. Yeah, it's called yeah. Exit Fifteen Coffee IPA, ale brewed with locally roasted coffee, out of my home state, New Jersey. You know, another opens. another uh, northeastern uh, New York. Brewery Six Point just put out a coffee blonde. I saw that. I, went, I did a beer run at ABC yesterday. I have a did couple. You pick sub- it up? No. Do you want to try a, one? I have, I have one have upstairs. A, oh no! Oh no! No no! I have a couple surprises I bought for you, Jeff. Of that six pack I built. Yeah. Yep. One of them's a sour. I like sours now. I'm trying to. I was I was gonna bring it, but it's not cold, so. I just had, uh, the other night I had Vanilla Noir by Prairie, Prairie Artisan, fantastic beer. Um, what else did I have? I had some really good uh, some really good stuff. We did a little bottle share over at uh, Jillian from Terrapin's house. Mitch oh, yeah? works yeah, yeah, here. Yeah. And we had Shout Darren out to Mitch. And Mitch. We had a good, we had a good little uh, time. We had just drank a bunch of beers and yeah. stuff, but uh, some good stuff. So this bomber I've had for, I want to say a while, but I've had it for a little bit. Um, so I'm not sure if you're supposed to roll it. I know that's common with Hefeweizens. Well, it's a coffee IPA. And looking at the color, it looks well. Let's it's see. Re- it's it's it, the sun just went down. <laughs> it's IP. It's IPA E. IPA E, which is funny because you get no color from the coffee. Well, no, that's the thing is that's what they did with the when Holy they did shit. the blonde stouts. Which actually is one of the beers this I had. This reminds me of a blonde, a blonde stout, or like the the white stouts. White stouts. That you yeah. were mentioning. So milk I had made. a milkmaid. Yeah. yeah. So this kind of reminds me, kind of. It's not. The color is not the same as the milkmaid, but it's light considering there's coffee. There's coffee on the nose. But not, no, in the finish, yeah, but not in the not in the mouth, not in the taste. Mm. Mouth feel is a hundred percent IPA consistency. Nothing yep. crazy to it. I really like that. It's good because I, I really think like it's, I, I don't know how long you've had it, but I don't get a ton of hop presence except 
right when it touches your tongue. Yeah. Only in the roof of your mouth, you get a little bit of bitter. But then after that, it's it's solid and it just levels I out. I had it for about, I would say, three months. Three months. Yeah, I, I mean, realistically, the hops, should, the hops should still be in there at that October. point. So maybe but this is knows, what it's intended. I got from Total Wine. So God knows right. how long they've had it. But it's 7.5%. It's really good. I like the coffee really cuts down on the on the aftertaste for me. Yeah, it's a different kind of bitter. So you get the bitter in the front, which... Everyone makes fun of me for not liking IPAs. That's fine. The reason why I don't like IPAs is because of the hop residue that's left in my tongue. In my yes. Mouth. No. That's what I don't like about you know, IPAs. It, it, for, uh, I don't do drugs, guys, but it's like getting cotton mouth when you smoke weed. Correct. Correct. It dries so, your mouth out and makes you feel like weird. My teeth are melting. That's, why, that's the reason why I don't like IPAs. Because every IPA, except for like Bell Sue Harden and Highlight, Leave that residue with me, and I don't like. I really don't like it. But we should talk about that uh, article that you posted because I which think one? It, oh yeah, the about one the yeah, IPAs yeah. that IPA lovers don't like because Belsu Harded was on there. I could drink that. I could drink that. I, I could drink a, you know glasses of that because it doesn't leave that that residue. But all right, so this is what brewery Flying Fish Flying Fish out of uh, Summerdale, New, New Jersey. Jersey. There. Uh, yeah. So so far, we've had two beers from them. The the rice beer we liked, Summerdale. If I re, if I recall, the rice beer pretty we, good. There was sediment in it, but I it, like sediment. You don't, I know, but I like it. Uh, it was a double. Uh, it t- we said it tastes like sake, very ricey. A little bit, yeah, very ricey. I think we all we all enjoyed it, but it, I don't think it ranked very high. I had four bottles of sake the other day, so now I probably would like it better. Yeah. Today than you I probably did would. back then. Absolutely, yeah. Um, this is really good. I really like the fact the coffee really adds that. I closed my you. eyes and drank it uh, a second sip, and I did like it a lot better because this I one? think the color didn't freak me out as much. This one right here? Yeah. Okay. So the color, you expect IPA. You get all of that hot, but if you close your eyes, the finish and the front and the nose, everything coffee, almost makes you think it's a stout if you close your eyes while you drink it. Yeah. Yeah, I can, yeah, I can get that. Now, would you would you classify this as a weird beer? I would have. A I would year say ago. this is. I would say this is borderline. I think this fits the bill as a weird beer. Beer. A year ago, like, I would have. I think it's a borderline weird. Right. I think that there's gonna be. Okay, so a year ago. As he's going for seconds. <laughs> a year ago, I think there would never have been coffee used in this way. So it would have been a weird beer then. But now that we've seen white stouts, blonde stouts, we've seen coffee making its way into Hefeweizens and all kinds of different yeah, things. Coffee's being re- used a lot. Coffee doesn't, and they've found a way to brew it without it imparting flavor into the, or I mean color into these beers. So now yeah. it's been used in a lot of different styles. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I don't think it's a particularly weird beer right now anymore however it's something that you don't see every day if that Correct. makes sense yeah, I get you, so yeah. it's not weird but when you it's come unique. across it it's unique and it's you unique. go holy crap man that sounds like that's it might be pretty good why i bought it i was a like, coffee ipa what the hell let's find out new jersey you don't get new jersey beers down here at now, all nowadays i feel like a like anybody who's really into craft beer is about 50 percent into let's let's change that it's about 40 percent 45 percent into unique beers that are not necessarily weird but they catch your eye like this a coffee ipa right then you're about 45 percent into your staple core brands core styles that you love for me 45 percent of the beers i drink are probably an imperial stout or a baltic porter that's that's where i live and then the other 45 percent is something unique that is a rare release from a brewery that you are it's a notable brewery a one-off something like that and then that remaining 10% is weird beer. And I don't yeah. think this qualifies as weird just yet, but I love when a real weird beer comes across the table. A real oh, weird. Jay! Oh, Jay, 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 Jay. Hop on, man. You want to be on the show? Well, kind of. You could both be on the show. You could both be on it. We have two mics. Coffee IPA, you want some? Just take one just- sample of a coffee IPA and be on the show for a minute. Jay's going to enjoy the show yeah. for us. Mr. Wu, the Ric Flair of Orlando. Woo! Smell it. You guys have white oak highlight? We, we did. Had, we had white oak highlight. We chugged the fuck out of it. On last episode a week ago. You bitches didn't say me any? No. Oh, you oh, can yeah, say whatever yeah. you want. Yeah. 
Yeah, everybody who comes on the show, including myself, first episode, I was like afraid to cuss. Then yeah. they were like, "No, it's okay. You can do it." It's a delicious IPA with just a hint of coffee aftertaste. That's what I said. The aftertaste well said, is where yeah. it's all at. The finish. Yeah. It's good. I like that. It is good. Yeah, it's out of New Jersey. I don't know if I like it anymore. No. What? It's Jersey. Our favorite football team plays in Jersey. Yeah, in New Jersey Giants. <laughs> our, it's, good. it's good. Our quarterback that looks like free. he has halfway down syndrome plays in New if Jersey. Want, if you guys want to get in that. So, yeah, I, I got seconds of this guy. It's really good. So, well, on a scale from 1 to 10 or 0 to 10, A beer, B beer, C beer. Ooh. We got, we got so, I did a lot of talking it up for what it is. Stylistically, it doesn't fall into it. A coffee stout or an IPA, in my opinion. It's a hybrid. Uh, so I don't know what Brewer's intent was, and I can't really factor that into my decision. Assuming they want to make something different. They say, let's take an IPA and mix it up. If they were shooting for specialty ale, I'll give them I'll give them an eight even. Okay. If they're shooting for IPA with an interesting twist, I'll give them like a seven six, which is where I actually think the beer sits in my palate. It's okay. a it's a high mid to high C. Um, it is good. It's very enjoyable. Just so you guys know, from my palate, what I actually think, anything like most beers you get at a bar are are a C in my opinion. So like B is reserved for better better than average, right. and it's A like is a, reserved like school, for one offs and good stuff. So, no, like, yeah. C is C is your average run-of-the-mill beer. craft beer that you get. So, giving this a mid to high C isn't a bash on what it is. It's just it, – It's an average That's where beer. it hits my palate. It's an average right. IPA. It's an average style. It's an average whatever the case may be. I will agree with you on that. Uh, for not, in, not thinking it's an IPA, just it as a beer in general, I'd probably give it a 7.8. Okay, yeah. Uh, average. It's definitely not a B level, but – you know, I would I would get it again if it was you know in a in a bar somewhere. I would get it again, right? Um, but I wouldn't lose my shit over it. No. Uh, if I wanted to have an IPA, sure, I, I would probably buy this if Two Hearted and Highlight weren't available, but or Bowegans. You know, like or Rust Cypher. I guess I guess that's a weird thing where it's like, it, it, what would I buy this again? I'd be more likely to buy this than most IPAs, even though I give yes. it a lower score than most right, IPAs. Right. So like, I like Highlight more. But I agree. I agree. Uh, or no, I'm sorry. Too hearted. So I would I would buy too hearted over this. But High Lie, which is a, is a hoppier IPA, right? Right. Is a what much more quality beer, and I I would give that a much higher score. I'd Correct. give that an eight eight. Okay. Almost a whole point higher. Okay. More than a whole point higher. However, I'd be more likely to buy this beer. That's odd. That's very odd. I'm I think, with you. I, I mean, think the flavor profile plays more to my palate. However, I understand that this beer is of lower quality than High Lie. So uh, logically, High Lie I know is better because it sticks true to its style and does it exceedingly well. But that, that brings up the conversation of are you drinking beer? Like what does it being of style really mean? Well, for me, okay. So for me, because From of the fact who that drinks, I went beers. So I went through beer school and before I went through beer school at World of Beer, I hated IPAs. So for me, I am not a hop person. However, right. going through beer school and learning about hops, all the different strands of hops, doing different hop-centric events, uh -huh. trying hundreds upon hundreds of IPAs over the years, all of that has played into the fact that now I have developed an appreciation for beer, for hops. So now I might, I can drink an IPA and enjoy right. it, even though it's not something I f favor. Correct. And so that's where stylistically i'm gonna give cigar city a lot of credit for making a great ipa highlight is relatively perfect for what it is right you know what i mean like yeah, 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 that's yeah. a go-to ipa that exactly. even ipa drinkers love right so it's perfect for what it is i'm not an ipa guy so for me i'd rather drink a lower tier coffee ipa like this that i know isn't as good but it plays to my palate more right but I still appreciate a good IPA, and I appreciate hops and what they do to a beer. So I have like almost mentally convinced my taste buds to appreciate beers that I didn't previously like, if that makes sense. Right. And now the next beer, my pride and joy, because I want to continue this conversation we're having. My pride and joy, 
think this is the second oldest beer I have. I have a, a Stone 12, 12, 12 in the fridge, which I'm scared as fuck to open both again, as well as this one. Well, you're supposed to enjoy that by 12, 12, 12. No, it's not enjoy by. It's the, uh, oh, it's the vertical series. It's the vertical series. So this is uh, Dogfish Head Bitches Brew. It's about uh, two and a half years old. It's been in my fridge, and I'm super nervous because I have never aged beer. I just forget to drink it. <laughs> So I have aged beers going on right now. I have, so I'll, my one weakness is not knowing how to age beers. I don't, one of one I of know. these days, we're gonna do a Bourbon County vertical, three a three year vertical of the Bourbon County brand stout. Right. I have that going. I've got a two year vertical, or no, I'm sorry, a three year vertical of 1050 by Oscar Blues, and I have a three year old 120 minute. If you want to try that. Yeah, we're gonna have to do that. That's gonna be a very <laughs> special episode. Um, so it's carbonated, which is a good, which, uh, you can have either one. I guess that you can have that one. It's carbonated. There's bubbles. So that's a good sign. Uh, it's, it's, which means you're sealed, held up for three years. That's the good held thing. Up. Uh, it's black as, as black can get. Yeah. Now you, now you get to see why I do this for the, for the beer and the bitches, except for the bitches don't come. How is that Jay? It's very smooth. Okay. I'm really nervous about how that hint, turned out. Hint of sour. Uh, that's that's the adjuncts falling off in it. Yeah. Yeah. Almost like a sour stout. A sour stout. Okay. Better question is why am I so close to the microphone? I don't know. You gotta be. The, 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 like two I inches. I don't smell. I don't smell. Or as it most being guys bad. would say, six inches. Yeah. Five and a half. Six Jeff. inches is two inches, Jeff. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it smells like bitches brew. It's good. A lot of licorice. Yeah. No, it's good. I like it. It smells sure. good. It smells good. Mm -hmm. It doesn't smell sour or anything. It has a little, little aftertaste of sour. No, I do get it, though, like yeah. he's saying. It's not It's not particularly sour, but it has... So I said hint of sour. A hint, yeah. a hint of sour. Yeah. It does taste like bitches brew, yeah. and it's... I would give it an improvement on this year's M M Bitches Brew. I haven't had this year's Bitches Brew. Well, I, I think I'm actually talking about last year's because I don't think this year's has come out. Oh, yeah, out. yeah, last 2015's. Yeah. It's, this one's very chocolatey. Right. Like a uh, like powdered chocolate. What is that, Lost Coast? Is that good? What is this? This is for you and Jeff to split. Okay. I mean, you guys like drink it from Here. Glass. Wait, Boston's back very quickly. Let him. Can we have him hop on real quick? What is it? The three-year-old oh, bitches three -year -old brew that you wanted brew. to try. Speak into the microphone when you do your thing. Highly carved and metallic, slightly. But the we chocolate got that. and the roasted malt is, is kind of in there and subsiding yeah, in the back. Yeah, that's bad. what we said. Okay, so it held up except for the fact that it did get a slightly sour metallic yeah, note yeah, to it. Yeah. Tiny. Okay. That's because it's losing the other flavors, the other adjuncts. We did that already. Yeah, yeah. we, we mentioned it. <laughs> Schizo, um, schizophrenic. Yeah. Narco oh shit! Holy. This isn't. Wait, this isn't shit. the one that you gave no, me, right? No. Oh my god! I smell thought it. I just ruined it. Smell oh my god, that smells don't really smell good. It. Don't even drink it yet. Just Wait, smell it. what is it? Say, speak into the mic. Schizophrenic, narcoleptic. It's a chocolate imperial stout. That I mean, smell. That tell me if that nose doesn't blow. Oh, I. Whenever I hear narcoleptic, I think of that movie where uh, Deuce Bigelow, where he de dates <laughs> the narcoleptic girl and she just falls asleep Can you all the time. Smell the beer, please. No, I'm talking about Deuce Come Bigelow, now. dude. Do it now. When I talk about Rob Schneider movies, you don't interrupt me. You you do it now. That smells phenomenal. Oh, his, eyes. his eyes roll in the back of his head. Yeah. All right, you All right that smells that incredible. Is. When I come back, let me know how it was. All right. Narc narcoleptic by uh, something. I'll put it in the, the video. Yeah, we'll look it up. It's uh, it I've never phenomenal. heard of this brewery, but it this smells, is, like, smells uh, incredible. like a crunch bar. My God. Yeah. Smell. You don't even like beer, but smell how that smells. <laughs> you don't even like beer, bro. Try, yeah, try yeah. a little sip. Try a little Good, sip. Dude. This is going to be glad. one you like. You have the rest of that bottle if you want. Something, something narcoleptic. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. That's really good. Wow. That's a 9-7 for me. Yeah. <laughs> That's a that is a legit. That's gonna probably win their bottle share, yeah. and I know that Boston has something crazy up his sleeve, yeah. and that's still probably gonna win. Yeah. Wow, is that that's good? That's a nine seven, easy. 
I'm gonna call that delish. Do you do you almost? This is gonna sound really bad, and I hope nobody. Taste a little bit of chocolate in there. I was gonna oh, say oh, just a little bit. Okay. This is. I hope this doesn't turn anybody off because I gave it a nine seven already. I enjoyed it, but does anybody get a tiny little bit of fishiness in it? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I get it. Right. The end is almost like a tuna fish sandwich. But in a in a really, I can't. You can't, ex- you can't really compliment a beer. With I don't even know how to answer in that in a good way. In a good way, but it is. <laughs> no. It is. It is. It's a nine seven. This Dogfish beer was head chalk lobster is good. And that's not a nine seven though. No, that's a eight four. I would say that's an eight two. That was good. I just meant the fishiness of it. But this was this was incredible. I think it's just, I think it's just the chocolate, the just the, the, the way the chocolatey so, yeah. had the character. I almost got like a little. Still it's a nine the, seven. The same way that I think Berliner Weisses taste like cheese. Yeah. They don't actually taste like cheese. I'm pretty sure Jeff has a boner right now, Mike. I I know I have a boner. That was a great beer. That I will not really say good. it gave me a boner, but the girl running on the treadmill maybe did. <laughs> With a bruised chin. I hope she listens to the podcast <laughs> yeah. some random <laughs> weird way. Like, oh my god! And like, oh my god! That guy, guy was so creepy. He was. He's just staring at me. Jeff could never be an Uber driver. So I think. I think. Me? Only boners if I was an Uber driver. <laughs> Steer with my boner. God, you guys can never come to this wob anymore. Not you would have to I'm be really close to the steering wheel, Jeff, if you're going to steer with your boner. We already said five and a half is six inches. Yeah. We round up. So. I, at, after drinking that whatever the hell we just had, and then the bitches brew, I can taste the metallic more. Oh yeah, for sure. So no. this this beer, it's bitches not, brew, it's not bad. Dogfish Head it, advertises it probably, all their beers are ageable, which they are because of ABV and malt character and everything. Maybe not three years though. But I wouldn't have aged this no three years. But that's not on you. That's no, just I just because they advertise aging it. But usually they tell you a minimum or a maximum of age. What was this? For instance, uh, like the coffee IPA. everybody who got Bourbon County this year and popped that bottle right away, they were advertising that a minimum of one year of age. So everybody who came out and got Bourbon County bottles this year and already cracked them. Higher math. A little bit. You're Same you're a little yeah. bit like a, a, a in front of the game, and then and then the biggest complaint against Bourbon County this year was that it was too boozy. Yeah. It's because you didn't give it the minimum age that they actually were telling you to give it. It was supposed to be think, one year to it. one year to five years is the is it. the pocket for the Bourbon yeah. County stouts. I have a sixteen point nine ounce bottle. I might age it. I so taste the metal on this now. That's what I was saying. It, it and the bitches. And broke. you didn't before a little no. bit, just tiny, just tiny bit. But now, and it's, now it's, it's very it's apparent really because we just now. crushed it with a, almost a. And, perfect and in 10. my defense, it's a, I, almost ten. Like I know. I know. No one's <laughs> accusing me of fucking up, but. I forgot I had this. I didn't forget. I just didn't fucking it's okay, drink it. I can't drink a whole bomber Dude, of bitches brew by myself. I, I had a two-year-old milkmaid. That's yeah. that's when you fuck up. Yeah. That's a milk stout that I'm, I I'm pretty sure years. that's against the law in all 52 states if she was only two years old. Mm. Yeah. So, like, I didn't, I, I, I've had it because I didn't want to drink it. Like, my roommates aren't beer drinkers. Like... That's kind of my problem. Sit there, like it's like, uh, you Although know, when I brought home DBC, when I brought home Death by Coconut, when I brought yeah. and I dropped that in the fridge, my roommates became craft beer drinkers. I've never had that instantly. Never had. You it. didn't have Death by Coconut. Nope. You're lucky. I have a four pack left. Good. I'll add that to this. The the last snow. Ooh, <laughs> ooh. Okay. When I come across another last snow and I don't drink it, if I come across another last snow. Keep we my will, eyes open for that. If it is in enough time, because DBC is only going to hold its coconut for probably another month or two. Right. Um, if we can get, if I can come across the last snow pretty quickly, which I think I can, uh, we'll do a taste test. Last snow versus DBC. Okay, we can do that. That'd be a great show. Be a beer battle. Beer battle, because I honestly believe. Here's my thing. New segment. Last snow is the is better, but DBC New holds beer battles. Up. We're gonna do it. Can we do a weekly beer battle? Sure. But, like, small, just quick five minutes. Yeah. We'll talk about two beers that are comparable styles. Absolutely. So we'll do, like, Death by Coconut to Kona Coconut shit beer that they put out. Yeah. We could do, uh, yeah, we could do a vanilla porter against whatever vanilla bullshit we, we come across. Dude, uh, that one from New York that Cassie brought from that was uh, solid. Raw, 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 damn it, I forgot what it was. Roar, Roarbach. Roarbach, yeah. That was really good. Where's the dog? Oh, it's behind the bar. Behind the bar where? Darren doesn't know. Behind the bar under the wash sink. So, in, in moving forward, uh, I think, how long would you age Bitches Brew? Obviously, two and a half, three years-ish is a little long. 
Well, this is. I was still on this for a year. That's yeah. Where I would so go. this is where I was kind of going when I wanted to talk with David, and he kind of shot it down. But uh, we'll talk about it at the end of this of the episode. Hopefully, this is extra extra stuff. But um, we're talking about adjuncts in beer, which is basically added flavor syrups and and different things that they put into these beers, right? Which are amazing when you get them fresh. All of your great beers that are no, he's he's the bar back right now. Um. Yeah, with the beard of Zeus. Uh, You're interrupting the podcast right now. Yeah, the six Um, inch, six inch lightning. Six inch. Everything's six inches now. Um, What were we talking about? Uh, Aging. Aging. Adjuncts. Okay, adjuncts. So adjuncts fall off of your beer because it's it's an added flavor. It's essentially injecting flavor into a beer. They come out incredibly tasty. Better than right. if you brewed it with the real ingredients. Correct. The only way you get maple bacon coffee porter is by adjuncting maple into it because we've discussed that you can't put maple into the beer. Right. So, yes, they come out incredible. However, maple bacon coffee porter is high enough ABV to age it, but if I aged it, maple falls off. You get uh, tiramisuhu or French toast wake and bake or all those things from Terrapin. Yeah. They're amazing if you get them fresh. You get that beer on tap and you're like, holy shit, this thing is incredible. Right. But then you try to age it, and those flavors fall off. And we had uh, we had a year old tiramisu, and it didn't taste like tiramisu at all. So um, that's kind of where I feel about this beer, where it's like bitches brew will hold up a little better because it's higher ABV, and right. the way it's it, Dogfish Head does make their beers to age. Right. I'd give this a maximum of a year and a half, two years before it starts losing the adjunct flavor. And adding that metallic flavor to it. Yeah. I think a year. In optimal, in, if this was in David Boston's cellar, his optimal conditions, yeah. with like the right humidity or whatever yeah. the fuck it is, <laughs> if it was in there, then yes, it would probably last two years without getting off flavors. But in, in our normal, like in the back of our closet, out of light and just kind of as best we can do it in Florida, yeah. yep. that would, I'd give it a year and a half. Yeah, I agree with that. It's not bad. Uh, I mean, it's still carb, so it's rating 6.8. I'm going to give it higher than that, but I appreciate Seven. the style. Seven. Don't be a dick, man. <laughs> <I'm just laughs> Don't kidding. be a dick, man. Um, no, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give it a – I'll give it a solid seven. <laughs> Bitches Brew by itself is like an 8.4 for me. Okay, yeah. We're talking fresh. That year's release of Bitches Brew is a good mid eight. No, you know, you know, you're right because it's not even their best Imperial Stout offering. When you have worldwide, that's like a nine five. Yeah, and you have a handful of other great beers from them. That all their stuff is high gravity, high AVB, super. Right. They, they, Bitches Brew is part of the music series. I'm not crazy about the music series in general. Um, American Beauty is like all right. Yeah, I wasn't. You know, I'm not a big fan of that one. I'm a huge fan of their Ancient Ale series. Have you had the uh, Chicha? I have not. That's the one. I, I got to get Derek I to get it. me that. I've had the Chicha. Derek will get us that. Um, but anyway, bitch. No, you're right. This year, Broma is really good. As far as can, can comparing this to what Bitches Brew is at its best. You're this right. Is, Bitches Brew is an eight five. Mid this B. is a is this is a seven five. I was really you give it a seven five. I would give it a seven flat, and I'm feeling feeling fancy today. You don't think this is better than the flying fish that we had? No, I like the flying. The, the I don't the, either. I gave it less IPA score, coffee. but it's at least comparable. I think. No, I like the, I like the coffee IPA a lot more. All right, good. We know which bomber I'm taking home and which one you're taking home. Well, there's, <laughs> yeah, okay. Feel free. But yeah. And it just has too much age on it because I'm not going to bash yeah, Dogfish right, Head right. about this It's not beer. a bad beer. I the mean, beer just, is a good beer. It was it's just, too long. It just aged was too long. For whatever reason. I don't want to drink a whole bomber. What, what, what alcohol by vine? It's like. I think it's like nine. nine. It's nine percent. So, yeah. I probably aged it too long. And a nine percent bomber by yourself is probably not the best idea. No. Nah. I mean, I'm going to probably finish it and I'm not going to the gym today. But, yeah. Yeah. Ooh. So here is February 20th is Bowiga's one-year anniversary. And this is their tap list of their regular shit, right? 
Bo Nine is a citrus pale ale. Uh oh, Boston's coming back. Oh shit. Okay, hold on, pause. This is Westbrook. Uh huh. Fifth anniversary chocolate raspberry. Not overpowering on the chocolate and the raspberry, Ooh. but it's definitely. Oh, there. this is yeah. This is you the one that Ken brought, right? You smell the yeah, chocolate but and raspberry. The flavor, it's not all there, so it's a little lighter. Spoilers. Don't talk shit about his beer because he's not here right now to defend himself. I said it right in front of him too because he's <laughs> a fucking piece of shit. He's gonna win. Yeah. No, he's not. Do I still get a house vote today? No, nope, no house votes anymore. Unless, unless we're under five, then yes. That so one we, you brought back was fucking. Who was a that? Ten. Yeah, but but whose no, was that? No, no, it was fucking thin. For an imperial stout, it was thin. Mm. You can't okay. deny that. Now tell me this, because we discussed it briefly in the best way possible. Did it not taste fishy? On the I back, didn't, I didn't get that. On the back. No, but I agree. It was a tan. We both we both thought it was fishy. A little, a little fishy. bit fishy. I didn't, I didn't get that. But, but then again, I gave it a 9.7, and he gave it a 9.7. But then again, these women are fucking creaming over us, and maybe one of the glasses made – maybe your glass made Boston, it. Boston, you've been so sexual and so gay today. My wife is going to love this episode. Are you well, – She's like, that's why we don't do Well, it. I was just going to ask you, is, beast. is everything okay at home? <laughs> are you all right? No, it's not. No. Is that what you wanted to hear, Jeff? Is that what I, you wanted? You sound like no. you're into the boys lately. I just don't no. get what's going on. No, fuck it. This is yours. I'm drinking. There's a knot in a tree. Fine. There's a knot in That's a tree. both of ours. I get excited. Yeah, you should. What is this thing? Chocolate raspberry. By Westbrook. Oh, the Westbrook. Yeah, okay. Yeah. This is Ken's, way, Ken's beer. You know when you cut, a, you cut a branch off a tree and it leaves like a little knot? I see yeah. that and I get excited nowadays. Your wife is definitely not going to like this episode. My do you want not. Mike to do some editing? Your wife is. Oh, this no, is so no, getting no, Do not edit. Do not edit. Okay. Not my ver- uh, Dude, fuck that. I'm, I'm, dude. <laughs> no. I'm vocal. I'm vocal to her. <laughs> Fuck is that. this all making the blooper episode? Yeah, this is gonna be on the very end. Yep. <laughs> Boom goes the dynamite. We can do a whole breakup. There's a, probably about an hour of me being stupid. Do I look scared? There might be like a half hour of you being stupid. We need to raise I'm money good. to get quotes printed of the stupid shit we all say. Dude, our shirts could be awesome. Suck it, AB. AB suck it. AB suck it shirts. <laughs> yeah. That's what we should have. AB suck it. You guys are ridiculous. You're ridiculous. Dirty Mike and the boys. And they would quote. Dirty Mike and the boys on quote, the back. Five and a half is totally six inches. <laughs> but no, just leave it as five and a half is totally six. Totally six inches, end quote. <laughs> All right, gentlemen. I am going to leave for now, but I will pleasure. be back with more beer. Okay, All right. Cool. So Boston lied to you. This has totally six inches of raspberry in it. Um, but I don't like raspberry, so that doesn't help me a lot. As far as stylistically sticking true to what this beer is, a uh, chocolate raspberry imperial stout. Right. It nails it. Okay. I'm going to give this a 9.5. The one before it, the fishy one that for some reason Still is, is going to sound terrible. I, I do such a terrible we job of selling beers. About the thin body, but the flavor is there. And the flavor the was flavor amazing. And the nose, the, body. the nose was a, it was an 11 out of 10. Yeah. The nose was incredible. Crunch bar. The nose, I literally had my eyes closed and roll in the back of my head when I smelled it. This so, one is like, eh. As a nine, as a nine five, it's like, eh. <laughs> eh, eh. It's like a, it's like a totally a, but so continue with the tablets of the Bowegans one year, Bow Nine, their citrus pale ale, awesome. They're heffin' awesome. The peanut butter hefeweizen, awesome. That's your favorite beer from them, is it not? That's the actually, one you said actually, was amazing. It's, it was really good, but it's not my favorite. Uh, Fat Sparrow, haven't had it. That's their double IPA. Their seven layer stout. Mick, their milk stout aged on bourbon soaked vanilla beans. Jesus. Lost Anchor, their American IPA. I actually like that a lot. And their downstairs wife, a Belgian blonde. Plus seven rare beer releases every hour starting at 2 o'clock. Wait, they only have eight tabs, right? Not for this. I was going to say, how did they do that? They're they doing, doing in, jockey in, boxes? In a parking lot of where they're at. Oh, so they're, they're gonna in a have, shopping center, so they're having a huge party yeah, in the parking lot. So they're going to have beer trucks. Or multiple stations. Just like, yeah, okay, so just like an, an they're actual... They're going to bring the cakes outside. Just like outside. an actual big brewery would do a whole big right, thing. Right, correct. That's pretty wild for them as, as small they're as They're literally they in a shopping center. I, like, well, I've seen, I've seen the their build, floor plan yeah. and what they... They're not, like, a big, they're not a big spot. It's about as big as the Southside patio. It's smaller than the Southside patio. Yeah, so... And the seven rare beers. It's as wide. It's just not as deep. It's, right, it's right, a right, right, smaller right. It's brewery. Really small. It's real small. So starting at 2 o'clock, they're releasing one of these an hour. We do what we want. A wee heavy rum barrel-aged quad. Ugh. 
English, Sorry, I'm not to bash okay. you. It's just uh, quads. Ugh. English brown ale with toasted coconuts and cocoa nibs. Into it. Love it. Do that. Heffen, R, Heffen Awesome R Imperial Peanut Butter Hefeweizen. Into I'm it. about that. Let's do that. It's an Imperial now? Yep. They did. Into it. Into it. Strawberry stout cake, milk stout aged on strawberries, vanilla beans, and cocoa nibs. I'm about that. Yeah, I mean, the, the cocoa nibs is such a buzzword now. Milk stout with strawberries and vanilla beans. Aged. Yeah, I'm into that. It's or, just, yeah, it's just cocoa nibs is everywhere now. It's like cocoa nibs everything. Vidi, vidi, vini, vidi, vinci. Vidi, vidi, vinci. Raspberry ale. I try it. Fuck it. Whatever. Raspberries suck, so no, I won't. Uh, and then theogi- theogenes. Or th- I don't know. I'll put it in the Theocles. Whatever. It's the anniversary barley wine. I'm about that. Barley wines are real cool, and there's not a lot of breweries doing them anymore. You know what? What I said earlier on the other episode. I'm fucked up. Wait, is this is this all one episode? Uh, I'll cut it up. The one that we're, the Styles episode is that this same episode? Yeah. Okay. So as I said earlier in uh, this episode about Styles, about how no one's doing Imperial Reds anymore. I feel like not enough people are doing barley wines anymore, and they really need to start doing those again. Barley wines are awesome. And get this, if you're a brewer, they're like God's gift to brewing because, yes, they might take time and they might be a lot of ingredients and they might be high ABV. And, yes, there's a lot of things that go with them. Right. But there is no expectation on body or or uh, carbonation. That's very true. You can literally put out a barley wine that pours like water with zero carbonation and nobody is going to say anything. So if you minutely fuck up a barley wine no one will and ever the flavor know. comes out right, yep, no one, fucking no one will ever know. No, ever know. So if I'm a brewery, I might take barley wines on and be like, shit, even if I don't get the carbonation I want, I've got a barley wine. It pours like water. It's thick as syrup. Whatever. Literally, I've had barley wines that taste like you're drinking syrup, and I've had barley wines that are light like water and anything in between. And the thing is, there's no expectation for that style. Right. So that needs to come back. Barley wines need to be a thing again. Yeah. So this this is February 20th at noon at Bowiegans. Shout out to the no cover because, God, that's a fucking scam. I hate that shit. We never have cover here, in case you're that wondering. That pisses me off. We have places charge you fucking cover. It makes me so mad. Uh, and they uh, have... Uh, plug it anywhere. World of beer. No cover ever. Uh, live music from the Cook Trio, Tessa, Mar- Tessa Marie, and more. And then food provided by Colorado Fondue Company. Oh, Vinzo's, my God. Vinzo's so Italian good. Grill and Pizzeria, Wingstop, and more. I'm fucking going. You should go. Well, you should go to Bowiegans before then. When is it? The, February 20th. Oh, I could go to that. Saturday, all day. Yeah, I could go to that. I'm going to go to that. We're going to go to that, guys. We're Everybody's going, going, hey, I'll see all of our fans there. A Even lot, the ones from Texas. A lot of traction, too. A lot of traction. Uh, Heather is interested in going. Your girl. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, are we, what are we, are we winding down on this episode now? No, we're just talking. It's David. Gentlemen, I have the brewery. We all know of them out of California. San what Diego. brewery? The brewery. Who? Which one? Black Tuesday. Black Tuesday. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see Mike. Let's see what Mike does. Oh my God. Bourbon. I cook I with Black it's like Tuesday. Nineteen percent. Tell me how amazing that is. Vanilla, toffee. Oh wow. Chocolate. Like the smell phenomenal. is very boozy. I, re- I recently made um, like some Black Tuesday marinated steaks. Get the. Nobody likes you. And I cho- I chopped him up and I gave him to my dog. I hope he gives you <laughs> diarrhea. I hope he gives you diarrhea. I hope your dog. I'm getting black Tuesday is amazing. I'm just fucking with David. I hope your dog poops on your floor and you have to clean it. I would black eat. Tuesday I would eat black Tuesday poop. <laughs> don't tell me that. Nine because I would too. I give that beer a nine four. You don't give this the what what the then uh, is it narcolepsy. At first? If, it, yeah. if we aged it for like a year or two, do you think it'd be perfect? Yeah. You don't give it narcolepsy right now. No. You like that narcolepsy, didn't you? Dude, narcolepsy yeah, did. was really amazing. Really tell did. me, dude, wait, dude, sip it. Hold on, which, which beer was yours before I sip it? I haven't, I haven't, my beer's still in there. I haven't been drunk. All right, yet. good. Narcolepsy's awesome, then. I'm not giving David any credit for anything. I will never tell you what my okay. beer is. Okay, 9.5. I'll give it a 9.5. I've had Black Tuesday before, but this so smells boozy. 95 boozier. out of 100. Yeah. You like how I did that? How I changed your number a little bit? It's fine. It all means the same. I give that a 9.5. Ooh. Aileen, I think Aileen got a little moist under the hood. 
Jesus Christ. <laughs> The thing is, no, the, no, the, vanilla, the, beer, not me. the vanilla, the vanilla, the vanilla finish is is what rounds it all out. Coffee, chocolate, sticky, chewy, vanilla, bourbon. It, okay, it has, I take it back. I'm switching the two scores. Is that your number one right now? Yes, that's that's the nine seven. I st okay. I'm you giving right, narcolepsy you, higher score. Narcolepsy is a nine five. We have five. more coming up. You know that, that's right? That's fine. I'm, I'm, I'm here. still giving narcolepsy all night. Yeah. Do don't it. don't you leave. I'm not leaving. Don't, don't I can cut this up. Mike, I'm not worried about it. I'm don't still giving go. narcolepsy a higher Mike, score. Let go. I'm, I'll never let go. Okay. I'm giving narcolepsy a higher score still. Okay. You I'll have more. Them. There's more. That's this will three. be a nine five. That's only three so far. The only reason I'm not giving it any higher than a nine five, which oh my god, I can't believe I'm not giving it a ninety six out of a hundred, but I'm giving it a ninety five out of a hundred. But the only Chase, reason I'm more. not is because I do think it needs another year of age. It needs yeah. to mellow out a little Jeez, bit. It is yeah. it is a little overly boozy. So should I bring my 2014 next bottle share? It you don't want murders it? the booze. However, boozy is good. I love boozy beers, so I'm going to give it a 9.5. You have, you, have, you have two people that were sitting here with you earlier. Give them a sip. Tell them what they think. Or, well, Mike, she doesn't drink beer. Jay does, okay. though. All right, guys. Get ready for the next one. Be ready. That's what, boozy as what fuck. What happened to that wrap that I ordered? I don't know. I was just thinking the same thing. I got we got tater tots. Can we take here. a break. I got to pee. Yeah, work time. <laughs>